What is up YouTubers, lovers of budget cars and bikes, welcome back to the channel, welcome to a new video and something quite special, not necessarily budget, it has to be said, this is one of the most expensive cars I have ever owned. It is a Lander of a Freelander 2, but this is a quite a special one. We'll talk about that in a minute. And it came in as part of a deal on the Volkswagen Transporter T5. I'm hoping you've seen the videos on that. I'll link them in up here, the playlist. And you can have a look, we'll look at the Volkswagen conversion. We did the camper van conversion. But essentially what happened was there was a really lovely couple who live in the same town as me. They were looking to get into a camper van kind of scene, but didn't want to go crazy when it came to how much they invested. And they had this. So we did a deal and I am now the proud owner of this beautiful Land Rover, my very first ever Land Rover. As you can see, it is in pretty stunning condition. This is the top of the range. They don't get any better than this. This is the SD4 HSE Freelander 2, 190 horsepower and a 2.2 litre diesel, which I don't like diesels. If you've been watching the channel for a while, been subscribed for a while, you'll know I'm not a great fan of diesels, but it is what it is, you know, and uh, we'll talk about why I'm probably not going to keep this in a second, but I just literally wanted to show you what I have in the carport, as it were, at the moment, since moving on from the transporter and, you know, how that went and uh, just give you an overview of the car. As you can see, it's quite an imposing car. It's a really, really beautiful 4x4. It has all the functionality that you would expect from a proper 4x4 as well. It's got four different functions whereby you can select whether you're driving in snow or mud or rivers or mountains, all that kind of stuff. It's all switchable. We'll show you that when we get inside the car. But as you can see, it is in stunning condition, although it is black and I don't really enjoy owning a black car for obvious reasons and the birds have been out. Thank you for that. Um, as you can see also, it has these incredible side steps, but I didn't notice. Now here's a bit of advice for whenever you view a car, you're thinking about doing a deal, always check every single aspect of it because I didn't notice little things like the paint is chipping off pretty pretty badly on this step here. Now it wouldn't be too difficult to sort that out because as you can see it's just basically chipped off here. All this can be cleaned up. I am considering sanding all that original paint off and just getting some aerosol hammerite paint and just redoing it. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to bother. Um, I haven't decided. It's only been here a week and uh, I really don't know what I'm going to do about that. The other thing I hadn't noticed is the odd tyre wear on this tyre over here which is a real bloody shame because these tyres are not going to be cheap. I did know from the last MOT that there was an advisory on this tyre over here so that's got to be done so it does need two tyres which aren't going to be cheap. They're about a hundred quid a pop on these. As you can see they are quite beefy. No tow bar which is a real shame because a guy actually came around yesterday to look at this car and didn't buy it because it didn't have a tow bar. I mean I would have thought that was a bonus not having a tow bar because you know it hasn't been under any stress um, and it's just been used for running around town like a little SUV like a, you know, a mum's school run kind of car which is good even though it's got 190 horsepower and 2.2 litre diesel you know it's not been used in anger in that respect it does have an enormous boot let me just get this key out for you a second and as you can see the wing mirrors all kind of spin out for you which is quite nice automatically we'll open up the boot and have a little look in here first actually I've got to press the key twice but there we go no automatic electric boot lid there, just a manual and a cavernous space here. And all the seats obviously do fold down and you get this really nice little kind of leatherette, I'm assuming, kind of divider here that pops in there. And a full size spare wheel. As you can see, the wheels are in immaculate condition. I imagine they've probably been refurbished. I am considering putting that wheel on to this side over here or here or here. I might just get a couple of tyres actually. I'm, I just don't know yet. But... Bodywork wise, it is stunning as you can see. It's quite an imposing car. I mean, I'm six foot one and the bonnet comes up to almost my chest. But, you know, it's drivable. It's not over imposing. It's just a class car. I've never owned a Land Rover in my life as a seven. You know, I really wanted to be able to have it on my list of cars that I've owned. And they don't get much better than this. As I said, this is the top spec HSC SD4 model. Let's get a little look inside. We'll start with the back seats first. Full leather interior as well, which is stunning. And in a amazing condition but you get little things like um, a little oh there should be a way to pop that up there is a way to go oh, there it is there's a little cubby there I don't know what you'd put in there you couldn't even put a 
chocolate bar in there really, but it's there. And a couple of cup holders, which is nice to see in the back. And a little shelf there, which I have no clue what that could be useful for. Anyway, let's get into the front. But as you can see, a really, really nice little place to sit. This is where the magic happens though. This is really what you're paying for. The, the top of the range, as it were. Fully electric, heated memory leather seats multi-function steering wheel we'll talk about the gears in a second you get these lovely armrests as well which fold down and adjust headrest twin sunroofs it's like a panoramic sunroof but with a little divider in it both with nets only the front obviously slides and tilts let's just jump inside a sec oh there we are electric windows all around and we do have an alpine stereo system as well let's see if we can get this key in here it's got one of these kind of bmw-esque key malarkeys here you pop that in there if i just shut this door a second there we go and then you just press the button I've got to put my foot there we go and there's the dash the dash is a bit dull if I'm honest because I don't like that green but it's oh, sorry let me just turn that down the dash is a little bit dull as I said um, but it is typically Land Rover uh, that's the way they do it. they have a green screen with black writing on there is an integrated sat nav system as well and a little computer on board there so you can check out your diagnostics six CD multi changer air conditioning heated seats and then obviously you've got your little control you just Hurry. Yeah, we go. There's the control for basically going into snow and um, into mud and on banks and all that kind of stuff. You just switch it around on there. And there's a hill descent there as well, which I'm sure you will know about if you're looking at this car. It does come with a dash cam as well, but this one seems to have fallen off. So I'll have to get that back on there. That just came with the car, essentially. But as you can see, a really, really, really nice place to be. There's no rips in the leather. There's no wear in the, in the leather at all. It's done a total of... 88,499 miles, so 88,500 miles, which I think you'll agree is incredibly low for a 12-year-old car. And it's got full service history as well. Um, again, with this green, I'm not entirely convinced about that. Let me just uh, turn that off. It also comes with a full service history, mainly at main dealers, and it had its cam belt done a couple of years ago at 81,000. It's just the way those doors close. It's just sublime. And it had its all-important 10-year service as well, which includes things like um, the diff oil change the gearbox oil change all that kind of good stuff but that was about 500 quid so it is good to go apart from a couple of little negatives as you can see the wheels are in stunning condition there is a bit of a lip on well actually no saying that it's got new discs on the front it must do because i actually got a receipt for that the back ones yep so it's got new discs back and front which i imagine means it's probably got new pads as well there are receipts upstairs copious amounts of receipts three keys as well but far more expensive than you would imagine i'd love to see your comments in the comment section how much do you think that this car is before I tell you you know what do you think it is stop the video here right here in the comments see what you you know what your in estimation of one of these is you'd be surprised I mean it's a 2011 nearly 90,000 miles it's got a couple of little issues I got a feeling possibly there is a wheel bearing on its way out on that side over there cheapest chips parts 75 quid will get you the hub with the bearing in it not very difficult to get out so maybe a couple of hundred quid i would say if you spent 400 quid on this 200 quid on two new tires and get that wheel bin bearing sorted out it just it would be absolutely perfect basically apart from obviously a tiny little bit of cosmetic issue on these steps here which is a shame but it's understandable obviously because it's really low to the ground stones are going to bounce up and chip and you know scratch into that but generally speaking if you look down the side of the car it is stunning. There's no dents, there's no scratches, there's no scuffs, there's no dings, there's no nothing. It is perfect. It's been very, very well looked after. There's the dash cam I was just telling you about there as well. It's not hardwired in, it's just put into the cigarette lighter, but it's there anyway, and it was free. So, what do you think, price-wise? This book price on Auto Trader goes for £10,600. <laughs> I know! It's incredible, but I've seen the models down from this, and obviously they just go down incrementally. And you can pick up the SD4, I think it's, oh, it's the next model down anyway, and that's like seven grand. So you think, well, that's three grand saving. That's crazy when you consider that that also comes with heated seats, memory seats, cruise control, all that kind of good stuff. But it doesn't have leather and, you know, a few other little bits. But, I mean, three grand, really? Their option on extra list must be enormously expensive. That's all I can think. But... Whoever decided to buy one of these decided to buy the best they can get. And it's also got the roof spoiler as well. Tinted rear windows as well. I mean, going around this car, the more you go around it, the more you see little things that you've missed out that it has. 
against other models. It doesn't have LED lights, it doesn't have daytime running lights, it doesn't have stop-start technology, and it doesn't have an electronic handbrake. All good things, in my opinion, because the other stuff that it does have, uh, you need, and that kind of other stuff I just mentioned, you probably don't. So anyway, that is it. Why am I not keeping this car? Essentially, finance. It owes me, um, oh, it probably owes me somewhere in the region. I need to get £8,500 for this car to pretty much break even on the Volkswagen Transporter camper van project that we did. If I can get eight and a half for this, then I'm in a pretty good place. I get my money back, put the VW T5 down to experience and just call it a fun six months that I had doing that. Put this back into somebody else's garage and I can move on and put some more cars into the YouTube channel and some more content for you guys. But as I said, it's not a car that I can afford to run. We've got the RAV4, we don't need another 4x4, and certainly not a 2.2 litre diesel 4x4. Road tax for this, unbelievably, is £300 a year, and the insurance for me, because I use all my no claims bonus on the other RAV4, 4x4, is going to be £400. So for me, to actually get this to a state where I can actually drive it every day is going to cost me 800 quid, or 700 quid, shall we say, but with the tyres it needs and the wheel bearing, it's going to, if I wanted to keep this, it's going to cost me a grand straight away for twelve month, next 12 months motoring, because it needs a service which I can do it needs two new tires it needs that wheel bearing probably at some point in the next six months and I've got to insure it and tax it I don't want to spend another grand at this because it's not going to be worth nine and a half grand is it I'd be better off selling it now as it is and just moving on and basically give it to somebody who can use a beautiful Land Rover Freelander SD4 HSE that is it guys that is basically the update on what's happening here at Budget Cars and Bikes I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's been of some interest. I'm not going to take the car for a drive, I'm afraid, because I'm not insured for it, as I said. But I have obviously driven it. Took a 24-hour insurance policy out on it to take some pictures, all that kind of good stuff. And it drives sublimely quiet and smoothly, as you would expect. But as I said, I can't afford to keep it. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, consider subscribing. Give the video a thumbs up, a like, and a share, all that kind of good stuff. This, as I said, isn't necessarily a review. It's just an update on what's happening in my life, as it were, on the channel and stuff. But there it is, the freelance. Lander 2. Stunning car. Very, very, very impressive. But not exactly a car you can run on a budget or buy on a budget. So not really that much good for the channel either. So she's got to go and we will have something else very, very soon. Behind that gate over there is my new bike as well. We'll talk about that in another video. Of course, that is incredibly special. If I've already done the video on that, I'll link it in up here. But if not, it's on its way. But trust me, very, very special. Anyway, that's it. As I said, if you enjoyed it, consider giving the video a thumbs up a like and a share and also consider subscribing and we will catch up when i've got something more budget friendly all right take care guys thanks for watching